Good evening. Welcome to our service of silence and sorrow. We are grateful that you have taken time to be here this evening with us as we worship together sister churches, Good Shepherd and Heidelberg Union Church. So glad that you are here to join us for this very special and sacred evening. There is no bulletin today that might be a little nerve-wracking for some of you that really like to see the bulletin, but I hope that you will take the time to just sit and relax and let the silence move you. In our liturgy, we'll be sharing times of three minutes of silence. It might seem like a long time, but it's only three minutes. They will symbolize the three hours that Jesus spent on the cross as he was crucified. During our times of silence, do not worry about controlling your thoughts or blocking out the sounds around you. In a world filled with so much noise, silence can be uncomfortable and startling, but it can also be healing and revelatory. If the time feels long, hear that as a prompting from God uh, to open yourself even more. Tonight in the silence, we meet God in new ways. In this space, you are invited to hold your body and soul in whatever ways you are most comfortable. Listen to your breath. Inhale. Exhale. And be open to how the Spirit may move your soul. We will be prompted into silence with the singing bowl and invited back in the same way. And then we will sing the first verse of Were You There together. This will be demonstrated for you by our choirs, if any of our choir members are here. Are you a choir member, anybody? Yeah, yeah you got a couple. All right. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> we need you tonight. We need you to at least show us the way the first time. <laughs> We're going to demonstrate that. Let us now fully enter this space of sorrow and silence, focused on this question. What sorrows, mine or the world's, do I bring into this space?
as we enter into the final moments of the life of Christ, we seek not to rush to the resurrection, but to sit at the foot of the cross, a place where none of us wants to be, but a space many of us know all too well. So here we are, gathered together in the discomfort and the disruption, in the grief and sorrow, and in the anger and anguish. As we gather, we also know that the sorrows of the world are created and reinforced by individuals and communities with action or inaction, with subtlety or some consciousness, with intent or impunity, for all the ways that we have added to the sorrow of others or ourselves, we lament and confess. As we enter into this time of silence, let us reflect on the question, how have I or how have we added to the sorrow around us personally, communally, and globally?
Friends, we are forgiven for even our worst thoughts and deeds. We are forgiven not as humans forgive with limit, but as only God is able to forgive with the Holy One's unimaginable limitlessness. For this we are grateful. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We're called to listen. Our scripture readings this day come from Matthew chapter 27, which tells the last moments of the life of Jesus. After each reading, we will have a time of silence and reflection on the question, how is this sorrow known today? Will, we will not be sharing so the Spirit's words to you are yours and yours alone. At this time, I would call reader number one forward. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing but, get, but rather than a knot was beginning, he took some water and he washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, The blood is on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas from them. Flogging Jesus, he handed him over to, to be crucified. Let us reflect. How is this sorrow known today?
as they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by decided, derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross in the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The rebels who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. Let us reflect, how is this sorrow known today?
from noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, some of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let us see whether. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Let us reflect. How is this sorrow known today?
in response to the word, you are invited to bring the sorrows and sufferings of the world to the cross. These can be personal, communal, or global, for no matter the level of the pain, God can hold it all. Because sorrow comes in many forms, we will do this in three possible ways. By dropping a stone by the cross, by laying a nail at the foot of the cross, or by extinguishing a candle. As you come forward and leave your sorrow, you are invited to speak it aloud or simply hold it to yourself. If you prefer to remain in your seat, simply hold your rock or your nail in your hands as you pray. After everyone has come forward, another chime will be rung, and we will end our time as we started, in silence. After our final three minutes of silence, the chime will be rung three times for the three hours that Christ was on the cross. At the end of the third chime, the space will become dark, and we will all leave in silence. So let us now offer our sorrows to God as you make your way to your cross. I invite you to join in singing the second verse of Were You There When They Nailed Him to the Tree?
It is finished.